guys, Tom here from Panel Review. Today we're going to be discussing Corsair's new flagship keyboard, the Vengeance K95 RGB. This is the third keyboard in its generation, the first being a non-mechanical keyboard. After customer feedback, Corsair then released its second generation last year, which was the K95, which had the backlit keys. It had one version of the Cherry MX keys, which were the red, the gamer's choice. And then finally, we've got this new version, the K95 RGB, which comes with 16.8 million color backlit keys, as well as Cherry MX Red, Brown, and Blue to choose from. So as you can see here, I've got the Cherry MX Brown version. Uh, my reason for this is I'm not a fan of loud feedback from the keys itself, so um, the brown itself is a well balanced between the red and the blue. The blue tends to be louder and the red in, in between. Um, based on feedback, most gamers like the red, however, uh, I've gone for the brown here. So just open this up. So here's the keyboard. Comes with two USB ports, uh, two USB cables, sorry. Um, I assume this one is to power the keys itself and the other is to power the uh, the additional USB port that's connected to this keyboard itself. So what's else in this uh, box? We've got the the wrist rest. We've got the warranty. And we got some basic instructions that most likely you and I probably won't read. So there we have it. We've got the wrist rest here, and we've got the keyboard itself. Let's take this out of the bag. Nice clicky feeling, got good space between the keyboard and the back plate. The back plate itself is um, aircraft grade steel or aluminium. And going from right to left, we can see that we've got the media keys here, the mute button, the volume, stop, back, play, pause and forward. Going down. So you've got the windows lock and the dimmer, which we can show you later. Furthering down again, what is different is that on this keyboard, uh, the key for changing the profiles or the backlit profiles is no longer there. I assume now this is completely controlled by the software itself. We've got those familiar M1, M2 and M3 keys and also the macro record key and obviously the G1 to G18 keys, macro keys. So let's um, plug this in and see what it looks like lit up. So here we have the keyboard lit up and as I mentioned the dimmer key can turn it off, can put it lighter, make it uh, more bright and obviously at its brightest. One thing I should also mention about this keyboard Unlike any other keyboard I've ever seen, it's got a polling rate here. Now, people that will benefit from this are those that are trying to get into the BIOS uh, via USB keyboard. Uh, I don't know if, you're, if, if you've experienced like I have, but um, most USB keyboards I've had in the past, when I try and get into the BIOS, you just can't get in. You press F1 or delete and 
you know no matter what you do nothing works you end up having to pull out a ps2 uh, keyboard out from your loft just to get it working now hopefully i've not tried this yet but this comes with let's just check it comes with four different polling rates one one two four and eight so hopefully from now on when you need to get into the key uh, into the BIOS, this should not be a problem. Now the keyboard itself feels extremely sturdy. As you can see here behind, this is the previous keyboard I was using, the uh, Razer's Deathstalker Ultimate. Um, this keyboard itself is obviously not a mechanical keyboard, however it does have some fancy features, all of which I probably never used. Um, however this keyboard is, as I mentioned, it's full steel, it feels a lot more sturdy. And overall, you know, you can't even compare the two keyboards together. This one wins. Uh, the reason why I haven't gone for a mechanical keyboard before was I did like these OSDs from the previous keyboards. I've owned the G15, the G19, and more recently this keyboard here, um, all of which I want to get uh, some form of information from my computer about what, you know, what temperature the graphics cards are, what, uh, you know, what speed the computer's running at, However, the Deathstalker Ultimate does not provide this information. I managed to find a new solution from Go Overlay, which I can show you right now. So this solution has helped me move away from these fancy keyboards with the touch screens or with various other types of on-screen displays, which isn't so necessary. At the end of the day, the keyboard itself should be a lot more sturdy, it should be a keyboard that is built to last, does not get dirty, and overall works much better than the average keyboard out there. So these keys itself are the Brown NMX as I said, let's just have a look. Try and zoom in there. You can see it's the brown MX key there. And finally, what we need to have a look at is the software itself. So I'll just go ahead and install that. It didn't actually come with a DVD, so I assume it has to come from the website. So I'm not sure, the website itself. So I'll just go ahead and install that and log back in once that's installed, then we can go over the software. So before we install the software, I'd just like to quickly have a look at the wrist rest. Now, as you can see behind here, here, rubber for the wrist rest does tend to wear. Now this has some form of rubber, however, I've not had experience with this yet, so I don't know if this is going to wear as bad as the one behind. But um, it does feel different, it feels a lot higher quality and therefore I'm hoping wear and tear will not play a big factor on this. So to install it, as you can see on the back uh, we've got two screws, one here and one here and the connectors itself. So this will really secure it tightly, it's not going to come off and it's just going to give it an overall much more sturdy feel. So to put it on We uh, just have a look. We click it like so, and then we just screw it in here. What we have is a nice flappy wrist rest that's going to fit on any surface comfortably and that's the final look. And now over to the software. Let's just load it up and here you'll be presented with um, a few different types of settings and configurations. The first would be the on-screen display. 
you can choose if you want this setup or not. So we can press the preview and you can see here we've got the display that will be used during games. You can change the color by right clicking and changing it to blue for example. We can invert the text to make it white and so forth. Now there's quite a lot of different features, too much to explain on this review itself. So for now I'll just go through a few of the things to look forward to uh, when you actually come to using this keyboard. So the lighting itself, these are lighting settings that you can set while configuring the keyboard itself. These are basically uh, what's called lighting effects. Here they just explain, or you can edit them. We've got a rainbow here. I'll show you how this works in a bit. Actions are your recording, uh, sorry, are your macros. And then your profiles are, your profiles are how you want to set the keys up itself. So by default, by default it comes like this. Now it's important to note you've got different groups. Each group is a layer. So a bit like Adobe Photoshop, um, one layer applied to another, it acts as a, it, it combines them all together. So that's why, for example, if you want to set the G keys, if you press green, or even if you press red, it won't actually look red because these other groups combine their settings over these keys itself. So I've just gone ahead and made a few profiles myself just for demonstration purposes. Um, once set up you can have a wave, so if I was to press this button here, you'd see a little wave, you can have a reverse wave, that basically splits the wave into two. A ripple, key press, so when you press the key, the key itself highlights, and then you can also do even more advanced versions like the rainbow. The possibilities are quite endless. It's purely up to your imagination how you want to configure your keyboard. It can look quite intimidating to start off with, but it doesn't take too long and we'll actually do a different video to explain how to do all of these in more detail shortly after this. So that's it guys, Corsair's brand new flagship gaming keyboard, the Corsair Vengeance K95 RGB. Here at Panel Review we give this a massive thumbs up. Thank you for watching, please feel free to leave any comments or questions, subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to head over to panelreview.com to check out our other reviews. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Cheers.